The death of Prince from an accidental painkiller overdose highlights a crisis plaguing this country. Every 20 minutes, one American dies of an opioid overdose, which is approximately 500 per week. Two and a half million Americans have an opioid use disorder, according to the Hazleton Buddy Ford Foundation. WCCO's Jennifer Merrily spoke with a recovering addict about how far he went to get painkillers and the intervention that led to a series of recoveries and relapses. Dr. Mark Meyer is a successful doctor with a loving family, but not far from his mind is a path that led to pain and addiction. It always felt sort of different, kind of like I maybe didn't belong completely. He first took an opioid, Percocet, as a fourth year medical student after having his wisdom teeth removed. From the first moment that I took an opioid, I felt bigger, faster, stronger, more able to focus, uh, able to get more done uh, than I did without it. The Percocet was only prescribed for a few days. When he became a medical resident, his problem picked up. And so I started taking samples out of the sample closet and eventually crossed the line to the point where I was taking medications from my patients. I knew logically uh, and emotionally that I was doing wrong and uh, that it was something that I shouldn't be doing, um, but that sense of the need for euphoria initially and eventually the need to use the substance to avoid withdrawal symptoms was an overriding force. The behavior progressed over three or four years. He needed more and more opioids over time. At times he tried to detox but couldn't stand the effects. It was achiness and um, uh, lack of appetite, vomiting, diarrhea, you name it. Uh, it was just an awful experience and not something that I could hide. So he took the opioids until co-workers intervened. It was almost a relief at that point that, you know, yes, this is no longer a secret and I can get the help that I need. Dr. Emily Bruner treats opioid use disorder at Hazelden Betty Ford Foundation. Yeah, so that's a really difficult line to figure out when the medications are being used appropriately and when it starts to transition into something else. She says most opioid addictions begin with someone sharing a painkiller. It can progress to the need for daily use, and when it becomes too expensive, buying an opioid like heroin on the street. Others may see the warning signs before the user even knows they're becoming addicted. Seeming excessively tired, being irritable, and missing obligations without really giving any clear reason. If not realized and treated, the disease can be deadly. So this is a chronic lifetime terminal illness. It's like cancer or diabetes. Like left untreated, this can result in death and often does. But treatment is available and treatment really works. Dr. Meyer lost his medical license during his seven treatments for opioid and alcohol use disorder. In between, he says he made more bad decisions. I started using heroin actually off the streets um, just because of lack of access. And then when I wasn't using heroin, I was using alcohol. It became evident quickly after getting into recovery how close I was to death many times, overdose. and you know, situations in which I was, um, um, you know, there's the possibility of personal harm and, and violence. Dr. Meyer has been clean and sober for nearly eight years, and he can practice medicine again. He wants others to know there is help available, and you can recover. I wish that I wouldn't have been so concerned about losing the things that I had in my life, because the paradox was when I didn't ask for help, I ended up losing all of those things anyway. Dr. Meyer is the healthcare professional program director at Hazelden Betty Ford. The program treats those in the medical field dealing with addiction. We have a lot of resources at WCCO.com slash links. And we should mention millions of Americans are prescribed opioids and do not become addicted.